Hello, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing Room Factory 5 on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel, but was converted into video by me. Farm sim games are rather difficult to mess up. Give players a welcoming town full of friendly residents, a field that they can till to make ridiculous sums of money, and a few side activities like fishing or mining to fill in the gaps, and you've pretty much got the basics covered. Rune Factory games have always nailed all these elements, but they've built their repetition on how they throw in other gameplay elements like exploration and combat to bring things more in line with a typical RPG. The good news is that Rune Factory 5 meets expectations and does everything its predecessors did. The bad news, unfortunately, is that it pretty much only does what its predecessors did. The story picks up with your nameless protagonist blowing into the town Rigbarth and quickly joining the ranks of Seed, an elite military unit that maintains peace in the region. Trouble is brewing as people have begun disappearing and you've told that the rune energy following from a sacred place is weakening. So of course the local captain deems this mysterious stranger as the best person to solve the problem. Aided by supportive friends and allies, you thus set out on an adventure to get to the bottom of what's been causing all these ruckus and maybe learn something about your veiled past. We appreciate the attempt to give Rune Factory 5 a little more of a story than is featured in a typical farm sim, but it must be said that a fate of the world plot like this feels a little out of place. You're presented with some evidently very serious problems that threaten all life and well-being, yet you can simply ignore this crushing fate for as long as you want. As one might expect of this game, the gameplay suggests a chill at your own speed pace of tending to your corpse daily and flirting with the locals. Setting out on an epic quest to prove your heroic status is just another hobby of yours, and it's one that you can engage with or not whenever you please. Luckily, this awkward merging of story and gameplay doesn't get in the way of Rune Factory 5's overall charm. It's just odd that the entire game's plot feels like it's treated more as if it were a side quest. But let's be real, who actually buys a Rune Factory game for its story? Gameplay and overall charm is the main draw of these releases, and Rune Factory 5 certainly doesn't disappoint here. If you want, you can choose to play Rune Factory 5 almost as a straight farm sim. Day to day, there are fields that you can till with any crops of your choosing, and it only takes a few days for the harvest to come in so you can make a good chunk of change. When you are running into town to buy new seeds, tools or other materials, you'll eventually run into fellow townsfolk who will greet and converse with you in their own unique ways. There's quite a diverse cast on offer, and if you're taking a liking to any specific villager, you can eventually enter a romantic relationship with them after you've gotten to know them well enough. Every now and then, there'll also be fun festivals on display, where you can participate in some rare minigames and win cool rewards based on your performance. As you can see, that slow but always rewarding gameplay loop the genre is known for is at full display here. Every day brings with it new goals, new interactions and activities you can choose to fill it with. Some days it's better to go fishing, some days are spent tilling and watering a new way of corpse. It's easy to fall into a nice rhythm with the activities here, and you increasingly feel like a valued member of the local community. But of course, this only describes one portion of the full game. Whenever you're getting bored of your quiet farming life, you can easily swap out your hoe for a sword or an axe and dive into the nearest dungeon for some good old-fashioned swashbuckling. There are several different biomes to explore beyond the town limits, each featuring crisscrossing routes, voracious monsters, and plenty of worthwhile loot that you can make good use of back on the farm. Sometimes you'll even come across a dungeon, offering a more linear and handcrafted experience as you descend through the multiple floors of mystery. We appreciate the openness offered by this more expansive part of Rune Factory 5's design, but it needs to be said that the design of these environments often doesn't hold up exceptionally well when compared to contemporary peers. We're not expecting a Hyrule from Breath of the Wild here, but it can be a little bit disappointing when you get to a new area and find that you can explore every inch of it in about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, there isn't a ton of variety to find even when you do explore. Biomes are mostly flat and dotted with the occasional monster gate or treasure chest, while dungeons are mostly loose collections of rooms with the occasional mandatory fight thrown in. There's nothing to be awestruck over here, nothing that really grabs your attention and steers your sense of wonder. Environments are fine in the sense that they manage to fulfill the purpose of the gameplay loop, 
but it feels like a missed opportunity that the jump to a better hardware didn't come with a commensurate increase in the complexity these areas have to offer. One element that does feel like it got a bit more of a facelift for this new iteration is combat, which focuses on fast-paced, real-time action. There's a wide array of weapons you can buy or forge back in town, and you can equip a couple of active skills or magic spells to round off your build. Practicing more with a weapon will slowly unlock more attacks with that weapon class, while there's a nice dodge mechanic that rewards riskier playstyles. Most enemy encounters are simply a matter of mashing away the attack button and occasionally dodging, but there are some occasionally boss fights in the dungeons to push you a little harder with some more complex attack patterns. Combat can feel a little clunky in some places, especially in how simplistic and stilted some animations look and play out, but it overall feels rewarding and worth your effort to engage in a fight when you can. If you see a monster you especially like, you can then attempt to catch it with a Pokeball-like catch spell after you want it down a little, and you can add it to your farm if successful. From here, you can then build a relationship with the monster in a similar way to villages, and it'll become more useful to you as you build up your bond. Monsters can do menial chores around the farm to help cut down your daily requirements, or you can choose to take them into battle with you as an additional party member to level them up and give yourself more support for tougher fights. We like the thrill of finding new monsters and seeing what they can do for you, although it starts to blur together more with time. Still, monster catching feels like a meaningful part of the gameplay here, and we're happy that this feature made a return. Nearly everything you do in Rune Factory 5 will contribute to at least one skill, but often several skills will be affected. Obviously, doing things like fishing or farming will raise the expected levels, but we appreciate the cheeky addition of random skills that you don't even know exist until you get a notification that you've leveled one up. Wake up in the morning and sometimes you'll hear level up sleeping. Open a treasure chest and you might level up exploration. Get hit in a battle enough times and your defense will eventually go up. These aren't just there for the memes either. Every skill will contribute some amount to your base stats and make your character more resilient and capable of taking on harder challenges. What's nice about this enormous skill system is that it means that there are no wrong answers on how you should spend your day. Sure, you're technically supposed to focus on progressing the story, but spending a few weeks to work on completing requests or crafting will still net you some meaningful progress. We haven't made it far enough into the endgame to see if there's any challenges that really justify fully min-maxing your character, but it's nice to know that you're never really wasting your time on useless activities. You can play Rune Factory 5 just about any way you want and still get a satisfying experience. That kind of genuine sandbox-like breadth in a game's design is rare to see and difficult to pull off, but Rune Factory 5 nails it. One aspect that we felt rather let down by was the presentation, which is disappointing to say the least. The visuals, though not without charm, are rather simplistic and flat. Textures are muddy, models are clunky, environments are flat and blocky, and animation sometimes feels unfinished. It's not a hideous game by any means, but it's also not one that we would say has a very fetching art style. The visuals are good enough purpose, but we would have liked to have seen a little more effort put into this aspect of Rune Factory 5. Unfortunately, the middling art style is then made to look even worse by the presence of some serious performance issues that sometimes interrupt the gameplay. Every time you enter a building or step outside, there's a period of several seconds where the FPS drops to the 10-15 range as the game finishing loading everything in. Even once you've passed that initial chucking, there are still frequent instances where dips will happen, sometimes for no discernible reason. Meanwhile, any larger items that are on the horizon are often subject to some pretty egregious pop-in, where whole trees or group of enemies will simply pop into existence. These performance issues may not be game-breaking, you get used to them after a while, but it is disappointing that Room Factory 5 consistently feels like it could use a little more polish. As for its sound design, the voice acting cast is sufficiently hammy and really leans into the quirks of each character's personality, while the soundtrack is compromised of a relaxing series of chipper and friendly tunes. We would have liked a little more variety, as hearing the same tracks ad infinitum while you go about your routines can become irritating with time, but it's hard to find much to actively dislike about the music here. One element that does become quite grating, however, is how few voice lines your character uses when doing basic tasks. 
For example, when watering seeds, your character only has a repertoire of three or four lines, and often one or two of these will be repeated a few times in a row as you water each seed. It's the kind of thing that is charming for the first hour or two, but soon has you going through the settings to turn off voices. Rune Factory 5 feels in many ways like a jack-of-all-trades kind of game. It's an RPG, but it's far from the best RPG you've ever played. It's a farm sim, but middle-of-the-pack caliber. It does a lot of things well, but none of them exceptionally so. Sometimes that's enough. Nowhere else will you find an RPG that goes into this much detail on the farming system, not will you find a farm sim that integrates RPG elements so foundationally in its design. Simply put, there is nothing else out there quite like Rune Factory 5. It may have its flaws, but there's something to be said of how distinctly it commits to its unique approach. Even so, it's hard to say that Rune Factory 5 feels like much of an improvement over its predecessor. Aside from the jump to 3D graphics, which wasn't much of a jump and brought with it some noticeable performance issues, this is essentially the same Rune Factory experience that you could get on the 3DS nearly a decade ago. And while we can understand not wanting to fix something that isn't broken, the lack of innovation here feels like an enormous missed opportunity. The addition of things like same-sex marriages and improved catching mechanics are nice and all, but it shouldn't be the only fruits on such a long wait. Plus, it feels like the cracks of the gameplay loop are becoming more apparent. Rune Factory 5 feels more of like a re-release of a game that came out several years ago than it does to an exciting new release. We here at Nintendo Life give Rune Factory 5 on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. So that was the review. Thank you to Mitch Vogel for lending me his wonderful words, and I must say that I agreed with everything he had to say because I also got to play the game a bit before time because it does feel like it does need a little more polish, but I can also see why it has charm and why people would enjoy this. That was everything from me. You can also find this review in written form on the Nintendo Life website, and don't forget to subscribe for more reviews like this. Felix from Nintendo Life here, out. Oh.